warm good morning to all i ashwati madhukumar assistant professor faculty of law srm university sonepat on behalf of our department extend a warm welcome to all of you to the five day faculty development program on contemporary issues and changing facets of law i extend a very warm welcome to the distinguished chief guest of this inaugural function professor dr s shanta kumar director gujarat national law university we also have on the panel professor dr paramjit jaswal our honorable vice chancellor srm university sonepat professor samuel raj registrar and dean academics srm university professor manish khalla iqac coordinator and director campus life srm university mr manoj mathran kutte director administration srm university and professor dr komal odich officiating dean and hod faculty of law srm university I also welcome all our dear faculty members and all participants. The dynamic and constant evolution of law necessitates continuing conversations around the changes in the legal arena. It is essential to create conducive spaces for dialogue around these changes. It is in this context that we at the Faculty of Law conceptualized this FTP to cover various topics relating to recent developments and evolving jurisprudence on multiple legal issues. In the coming days we would be covering various topics like privacy intellectual property law corporate law feminist jurisprudence technology law etc we are honored to have a panel of the most distinguished resource persons who would speak on their areas of expertise we are also pleased to have you all here with us and hope to have fruitful discussions throughout the sessions to begin may i request professor samuel raj registrar and dean academics srm university to speak a few words about the university thank you thank you aswati uh good morning to all of you honorable vice chancellor sir and uh, our distinguished guest dr santosh kumar dr komal and all my dear panelists and my dear students and those who are participating in this very important event the contemporary issues and the changing facets of law and it's my privilege to say very few words about psrm university delhi ncr sonipat psrm university delhi ncr sonipat which started in 2013 at the invitation of the haryana government and we are very well aware that the srm group has started the institution about 50 years back we have the legacy of more than 50 years the elementary school to polytechnic to engineering college the university now the universities we have four universities 22 institutions we have medical colleges and i can start you know going on and on telling about the institutions and other organizations that we have as part of srm groups yes we have that you know the hotels five star hotel three star hotels cement industries tv channels and many other things are you know every year we are adding into this one so in this regard the srm university delhi ncr at sonipat you know plays a major role and i'm glad to see that the faculty of law is arranging this very important topic the contemporary issues the contemporary issues changes from time to time in the olden days we have heard i to i teeth to teeth mother for mother but we cannot imagine all these things and it should not be like that because the human rights plays a major role now how it changes and accordingly how the law also changes even in constitution also there are many amendments from time to time the need of the hour which needs to be considered and what are the issues related to the personal laws marriage laws and what are the issues that society is facing and the law students always you know play a major role 
today's law students or tomorrow's advocates and tomorrow's judges even to the you know chief justice of the supreme court and we know that so the chief justice of supreme court also was a student once upon a time without studying law he cannot become the you know chief justice of the supreme court so who knows those who are attending today's event they would be the future judge you know chief justice you know wish you all the best and many things that you need to learn from time to time even i would always tell my teaching the faculty colleagues every teacher is a learner without learning we cannot teach and i am also part of my dear you know faculty members even i am also learning a lot every day whenever i attend the you know any event related to the law i learn a lot and it's my interest out of my interest i attend the law events and today is the digital era in the digital era there are so many things are happening the cyber law plays a major role within the cyber law you know we have the right to privacy there is something is very private we need to keep it among ourselves you know no pegasus so you know pegasus would not come into the place and uh, you know many of the like can start talking okay. much in, within my little knowledge but my dear students and my dear colleagues we have the experts with us and i'm surprised to see that how our law faculty and especially dr komal could arrange all these eminent speakers we have not only just a star we have stars of speakers so with my you know folding hands i invite all my dear chief guests as well as other distinguished guests as a panelist as the speakers dr santa kumar sir thank you so much for accepting our invitation i have heard a lot about you and of course above all we have our own eminent speaker you know professor dr jaswal there is no comparison i always look at him with you know so much of respect for his knowledge you know for his knowledge then as a vice chancellor always i look at him the books he has written and uh, the you know i i cannot tell many things internal stories also how he remembers so many things section wise and i am meeting him every day so i have the privilege to know his you know that uh, interest in the law and the way he reads every day and uh, how he displays everything so sir thank you sir for allowing us to organize this event your leadership is very important and we are privileged to have you as our leader and uh, others are privileged to listen to you as an eminent speaker and eminent panelist and uh, once again my special thanks to dr komal for organizing this wonderful event not only to you with all your team and my dear colleagues thank you so much and wish you all the best please continue with this event and i wish all the students to get the best out of this event thank you so much thank you very much sir thank you so much now may i invite professor dr paramjit jaiswal vice chancellor srm university to welcome our honorable chief guest professor dr s shanta kumar director gujarat national university thank you very much uh, uh, aswathi in fact it's my proud uh, privilege and a pleasure to welcome my brother colleague dr professor uh, sanjeevi santa kumar who is the currently the director of uh, gujarat national law university gandhi nagar gujarat brother uh, santa kumar was uh, appointed as a vice chancellor of uh, gnlu in 2019 but uh, before that uh, uh, professor santa kumar uh, almost uh, uh, headed various institution in the different parts of the country and had a illustrious career yeah, he also holds the additional charge as a director in charge of gujarat uh, maritime university gandhinagar 
and uh, before that he was the pro chancellor and dean of school of uh, law in gd goenaka university gurgaon in delhi ncr region uh, professor uh, kumar is also the founder dean of uh, the faculty of law of sdt university gurgaon founder director of uh, itm law school uh, gurgaon founder director of mats law school uh, raipur and uh, i'm glad uh, uh, that before I joined as the Vice Chancellor uh, of uh, Hidayatullah National Law University at Raipur, uh, before that, uh, Professor Santa Kumar has been uh, the Controller of Examination and Associate Professor at HNLU Raipur also. Uh, Professor uh, Santa Kumar uh, uh, is a renowned research uh, scholar, a renowned academician, but before uh, coming actively to the academic side, uh, he also had a short stint at the bar and practiced at Madras High Court for seven years as an advocate. So he combines in himself the practical uh, experience as a lawyer and uh, uh, as an academician by uh, being the founder, dean, director of various institutions uh, across the country. Not only that, he had uh, training uh, on uh, uh, teaching uh, uh, law at the National Law School of India, Bangalore, and the World Bank funded project. And uh, uh, after that, uh, uh, at the Cardiff Law School, Cardiff, Wales, in United uh, Kingdom, under the British Council funded project. He has also involved in training the law teachers on law teaching and legal research at various universities under uh, the part of uh, scheme or a project which is funded by the British Council. He has visited uh, various uh, countries across the world and uh, uh, a prolific writer. He is a wonderful author, written many books. Uh, uh, it's uh, difficult to name them uh, all together here at this platform, but I can refer that he has written three wonderful books on environmental law and two books on human rights, uh, among many other books. Uh, when uh, some time back, uh, Dr. Komal came to me that uh, uh, we want to organize uh, uh, FDP for the law faculty here at the law school, I said, go ahead. The question was, uh, what is what should be the topic? And uh, we had two, three meetings and they said, the law is changing daily. There are new issues are coming. And that is how this uh, topic came. Uh, out of a discussion, let us have a FDP on contemporary issues and changing facets of law. So then uh, Dr. Kobel as a uh, HOD asked me, uh, who should inaugurate this? I said, uh, nobody is better than uh, Dr. Shantar Kumar because uh, he uh, knows uh, the, all the latest facets uh, and I know his contribution uh, as a part of the consortium of law universities. Uh, thereafter, we decided this, and uh, uh, I'm so grateful to Professor Shanta Kumar that on just a phone call, he agreed to uh, inaugurate this uh, FDP. As we all know, uh, law is organic in nature. Law keeps on evolving daily in its own right as well as through various institutions. We find that the Supreme Court from time to time almost daily delivering new judgment, new interpretation of law. We have large number of fundamental rights which are uh, given in part third of the Constitution, but uh, the Supreme Court has uh, uh, added different contours to almost uh, every fundamental right, whether we talk of right to privacy, whether we talk of freedom of religion, whether we talk of freedom of speech and expression, whether we talk about uh, uh, the right uh, in the cyberspace, or whether we talk about right to internet, all these uh, issues, they are, are these facets of law, though they are not uh, specifically mentioned uh, uh, in the Constitution uh, as such, but uh, as per the demands of the society, as per the growth in the nature, the law has been evolving and growing. So uh, it was with this background that we decided uh, this uh, topic of a contemporary issue and changing facets of law as the topics. And I'm glad there was a good response uh, from different participants. I take uh, this opportunity to welcome 
uh, my own colleagues at SRM, uh, Professor Samuel, uh, the Registrar and Dean Academic, Professor Bhalla, the IQSA Coordinator and Director of the Campus uh, Relations, uh, and, um, and Dr. Kutti and other colleagues, my own faculty members of the SRM University, and all the participants who have shown their interest. I'm confident that uh, uh, the speaker which we have uh, invited for this F FDP program from today up to the 25th, uh, they are all eminent speakers. Most of them, they are the vice chancellors and they are heading the different uh, uh, institutions uh, or different law universities or other universities in different uh, parts of the country. And they would give uh, their best uh, out of uh, their experience how uh, the new facets uh, uh, of law or in the contemporary issue, they are coming to stay and they are being interpreted in day to day life. And uh, uh, we are happy today. And once again, uh, I extend a very warm welcome to my uh, brother uh, Sanjeevi Santa Komarji that uh, he has agreed to uh, inaugurate this seminar and he will set the tone for the rest of the days. Thank you, Komal. Uh, uh, and all other faculty members for organizing this uh, uh, FDP program. I'm sorry I would have be, uh, been in all the programs together, but I'm uh, out of uh, town. I'm in fact uh, just moving to the airport, though the in internet connection is also very poor, but still I'm happy that I could join. With these words, once again, uh, I welcome Shanta Kumar, all other participants, faculty colleagues, and uh, my own colleagues at SRM University, and I wish uh, all the best for this uh, FDP program. Thank you very much, Aswati. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. And it is with your blessing that we could make this FDP come true. With that, let me move on. Professor Dr. S. Shanta Kumar, Director, Gujarat National Law University, has over 30 years of teaching experience at various prestigious universities. He also holds the positions of Director of Gujarat Maritime University and the President of Gujarat International Maritime Arbitration Center. He is an alumnus of Madras University, Chennai, where he completed his graduation, post-graduation and doctorate degrees in law. As Sir already mentioned, he also practiced at the Madras High Court for seven years prior to joining the Legal Academia. His areas of specialization are environmental law, human rights law, international law and constitutional law. He has several books and numerous research articles to his credit, covering various legal issues at the national and international levels. He has presented papers and delivered keynote addresses at many national and international conferences in India and abroad. He has represented South and West Asia at the IUCN Academy of Environmental Law. Currently, he is the chair of Environmental Law Study Group of the International Association of Law Schools and member of the Teaching and Capacity Building Committee of the IUCN Academy of Environmental Law. He is also the recipient of prestigious awards such as the Environmental Law Champions Development Award from the Asian Development Bank Philippines and the Best Social Scientist Award from the Indian Society of Criminology. Sir, may I kindly request you to kindly address the audience. Thank you, Ashwati. Thank you for this nice opportunity. <laughs> Yesterday, when I uh, started preparing for this session, I uh, came across uh, from my bookshelf a book written by Shivkira titled You Can Win. I hope many of you must have uh, seen that book called You Can Win, which is which was a very popular bestseller those days. Uh, so even if now, if you time permits, please go through it. It's a good motivating book. Uh, the cover of the book contains uh, uh, a very important message. The, the cover of uh, You Can Win says, winners don't do different things. They do things differently. So I thought of relating it. I thought I will use this as a starting point of my talk today of at the inaugural session. As law teachers, we don't need to do different things. What we only need to learn is how to do those things, what we need to do differently. So that is, in fact, uh, 
uh, is the sole object of this faculty development program on uh, contemporary issues and uh, changing facets of law organized by the Faculty of Law, SRM University, Sony Park. I'm deeply obliged to my guru, philosopher and mentor, Professor uh, Dr. Paramjit Jaiswal, Honorable Vice Chancellor of SRM University, uh, for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this noble cause of educating the educators. A noble soul, Professor Paramjit Jaiswal, always uh, 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 gives opportunity to young people and feels happy and takes pride uh, when he sees uh, uh, kids like me, mentored by him, do well in life. It's just a, a motherly attitude that a mother fee feels immense pride uh, in seeing her uh, child, you know, standing up and starts walking. I, I, I can see that same happiness in Professor Paramjit Jaiswal uh, when seeing young people like us. Uh, and he elevates us to this such platform, gives us this opportunity uh, to be a part of an inaugural session of uh, such a wonderful program organized by such a great university. Therefore, I wish to dedicate uh, this session uh, to my beloved Vice Chancellor Professor Paramjit Jaiswal. Uh, <coughs> Distinguished participants in this uh, faculty development program, ladies and gentlemen, wish you all a very good morning. Uh, congratulations on uh, registering uh, for uh, this program and wish you all the best in advance for successfully completing this program. I'm sure that uh, at the end of this program, you will definitely become wiser than you are today. Uh, in this inaugural address, I intend to flag some key issues associated with the teaching learning uh, for your extended learning. I request all of you to kindly focus on these issues and uh, equip yourself to face the challenges posed by globalization on higher education. Now, uh, you know, uh, coming back to Shiv Kera's views on what winners do uh, for knowing how to do things differently. There are two, three, four things, you know, we need to uh, know exactly that how we can do things different to be a, a winner. First is, we need to be aware of all the developments happening around us. That, uh, number one, that the learners are changing. Number two, the nature of legal practice has changed. So it's not the same, uh, you know, we, we don't uh, uh, prepare only for an adversarial uh, law practice in a court of law. Today, a very minuscule of our students join the bar. The rest of them do many other things. And as a law teacher, we need to also realize uh, all these changes, what is happening around us. Second, we need to realize and recognize those changes and uh, start adapting ourselves to those changes. First is realizing that there is change happening. Second is adapting ourselves to those changes. Now, after adapting, you need to Third one, what you need to do is equip yourself to face the new environment and the new challenges and the new generation in your classroom. And the fourth and the most important thing is continue to hone up your skills to match the expectations of the generation of uh, students in the class. Right? You, you will see that things are changing, but unfortunately, uh, in law, it's not happening. Uh, if you see the way uh, we do banking today, the way we uh, book our flight tickets. I know I had to spend half a day to book a flight ticket some time back, but today it doesn't take more than 30 seconds to book a flight. It doesn't uh, take uh, you know 30 seconds to transfer money from one account to another account, which took uh, almost the 30 half a days. Half a day, you know, going to the bank, standing in the queue, depositing a token, waiting for your token number to be called, and getting that cash. Things are changing around us. But, uh, you know, I, we need to introspect and see that whether those kind of changes, what's happening around us across various fields and sectors is happening in the legal education domain. That is what, you know, you just 
sometime uh, you know uh, maybe i think uh, in my session we will do some exercises to see whether uh, uh, we actually are reciprocating the change what's happening around us uh, you know there are a lot of things that uh, we want to discuss maybe you know for want of time uh, i will not discuss those things in the inaugural session but that i will uh, get back uh, when when uh, when i start getting into the topic during my uh, next session so as far as this inaugural session is concerned please bear with me uh, for sharing a story which many of you i am sure must have heard or read it before uh, many times but i feel that refreshing your memory and reminding of this story at the cost of repetition is essential uh, to make you realize the importance of this uh, faculty development program this is the story of uh, a woodcutter uh, who uh, uh, went for a job with a timber timber merchant so he went to the timber merchant and he asked for a job he got it salary was really good so were the working conditions uh, so for that reason the woodcutter was uh, very determined to do his best to give his uh, uh, the 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 employer the boss a uh, lot of thing so his boss gave him an axe and showed him the area where he was supposed to fell the trees and cut the wood and bring it so the first day the woodcutter brought uh, about 15 trees the boss said congratulations carry on with your great work highly motivated by the words of his boss the woodcutter tried harder the next day uh, but uh, he he only could bring down 10 uh, trees the third day he tried even harder but he was only able to bring down seven trees so day after day he was bringing lesser number of trees than the first day of work he felt that i must be losing my strength he went to the boss and uh, apologized and uh, said that he could not understand what's going on then the boss asked him one question come on stop worrying about it when was the last time you sharpened your axe woodcutter said sharpened i i had no time to sharpen my axe i have been busy uh, trying to cut uh, as many trees as possible so that i can increase my productivity and uh, this is what my friend most of us uh, you know we find time to do lot many things but we do not find time for updating our skills we think that uh, you know whatever we have learned is very much enough but believe me friends good is not good when better and best is what is expected out of you sharpening our skills from time to time is the key to success uh, the thing you need to realize is that in order to make it big in any uh, field in life any arena in life you have to build the skills required of your domain or profession often times what i see in many people is the idea that in order for one's life to change they, they will uh, start talking about the circumstances and say that everything around must uh, become different but in reality the only thing or uh, the first thing that needs to change in order for your life to change is you i truly believe that if you spend some time working on yourself the circumstances will fall in place for you uh, many people uh, go through the life like the woodcutter hacking away at different tasks uh, that they are not sufficiently prepared for if i can be frank with you perhaps the reason why these types are not successful is that they lack the necessary skills to be successful so figure out what skills are required to get to the top and work on them relentlessly i guarantee you if you work on yourself the universe will respond to you in a positive way it may of course take a while for it to catch up but i'm sure it will so step by step one gets ahead but not necessarily in fast parts go to work on yourself every day uh, take those steps and slowly but surely you will get ahead the circumstances may not be ideal for you at this moment but start to prepare yourself for uh, when an opportunity presents itself the window may be small but if you are adequately prepared you will be able to take advantage of it abraham lincoln once said you know give, give me 6 hours to chop down a tree and i'll spend the first three sharpening the axe 
which is very very important so put time on your calendar to sharpen your axe as a teacher you will be glad that you stayed so sharp i am sure that uh, all these things uh, it will hurt it will take time it will require dedication it will require will power you will need to make many healthy decisions it requires a lot of sacrifices you need to make you will need to push your body to its maximum there will be temptations but i promise you uh, when you reach your goal it's really worth it and uh, i wish you all the best and uh, i thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity and i hope to meet all of you again uh, in the next session thank you so much thank you very much sir we are so happy to have you here we are blessed to have you here in fact also uh, professor dr ranbir singh former and uh, founder vice chancellor national university delhi has also graced us with his presence so sir we extend a warm welcome to you to this inaugural function and uh, sir if you would like to address the uh, gathering Uh, sir you are muted could you unmute please aswati can i say a few words uh, uh, sure, to sir. sir please sir sir please Uh, by the time he may and what is that? I take this pleasure in welcoming uh, uh, our guru of gurus, uh, uh, Professor Veer Singh, uh, who is the senior most uh, vice chancellor for 22 years this country, founder vice chancellor of Nalsar Hyderabad, and founder vice chancellor of uh, NLU Delhi, and uh, he provided uh, the direction to most of us who are we we had a different uh, national law university than the different times. Uh, under the guidance of Professor Ranveer Singh, a renowned scholar in his own right, what we call him, he is an institution in himself. And uh, we uh, earlier requested him to uh, join us, uh, and then uh, uh, he agreed to uh, give the valediction uh, address on 25th uh, when we conclude the FDP program. But we are so happy uh, that uh, he could find some time to join us at the inauguration uh, when uh, uh, Professor Santa Kumar uh, delivered his uh, uh, sumptuous address. Uh, sir, we are grateful to you also uh, and uh, grateful to Professor Ranveer Singh for joining. If he's uh, there and uh, he can uh, connect, please would like to have a few words from him. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, can... Thank you, Jaswal. Uh, I just wanted to listen to what uh, Professor Santa Kumar address would be because I thought that will help me in coiling my thoughts for the valedictory. Uh, that was the only idea. Uh, let me join for the inauguration. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your nice words. And in between, I will keep connecting to gather some thoughts uh, from different speakers, and I'll definitely be there for the valedictory. Thank you very much for uh, your. A wonderful words for me. Uh, it's our pleasure, sir. Always we look forward the for light from you. Thank you. Thank you for thank me. you so much, sir. It's a honor for me as well, sir. <laughs> thank you, Shantakumar. Thank you, sir. Thank you for joining, sir. Over thank to us. Much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We are extremely pleased to have you here with us. Thank you. Now, may I request Professor Dr. Komal Odich, Officiating Dean and HOD, Faculty of Law, SRM University, to propose the vote of thanks. Good morning, everyone. Silent gratitude is not much used to everyone. So I, Professor Komal Odich, feel privileged and honored to propose vote of thanks on behalf of Faculty of Law. I convey deep regards and hearty thanks to the Honorable Chief Guest, Professor S. Shanta Kumar, Director, Gujarat National Law University, for gracing the inaugural ceremony. 
sharing his vision and very, very inspiring address. We are always greatly encouraged by your presence, sir. And somehow I think we are becoming little superstitious that every important event at SRM University must have your blessings and presence at the inaugural ceremony. So I hope you take out time for us in the future also. Thank you so much, sir. My heartfelt thanks to Professor Ranbir Singh, sir, founder and former vice chancellor of NLU Delhi for his gracious presence, taking out time from his busy schedule to bless us for this FDP. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I'm extremely grateful to Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Paramji Jaswal for his support, guidance and encouragement at every step and providing stimulating environment for organizing this event. My deep regard and thanks to Professor Samuel Raj, sir, Registrar, Dean Academics, SRM University, for taking out time again. I know he's a very busy person nowadays uh, from his busy schedule and gracing this occasion. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, my sincere thanks to Professor Manish Bhalla, Campus Director, Campus Affairs, Mr. Manoj Kutti, Director, Administration, for giving us support and cooperation all the time. Uh, my sincere thanks to all the distinguished panelists who have joined today for this inaugural ceremony. The FDP aims to deliberate on very, very important contemporary issues. Uh, we have like uh, transformative constitutionalism, appointment of constitutional court judges, need for an overhaul, online dispute resolution, challenges before banks and the insolvency and bankruptcy code 2016, rise of feminist jurisprudence and its implications in contemporary India, patents and public health, uh, complete justice, COVID-19 and constitution of India, smart contracts and blockchain technology, uh, regulating big tech and the role of academia in shaping the next generation advocate. Uh, my hearty gratitude to all these distinguished resource persons who are going to speak on all these contemporary legal issues. So my sincere thanks to Professor Dr. Vijay Kumar, Vice Chancellor, National Law Institute, University Bhopal. Professor Dr. Nishtha Jaswal, Vice Chancellor, Himachal Pradesh, National Law University, Shimla. Professor Dr. Of course, I have already shown my gratitude to S. Shanta Kumarji. Professor Dr. V.K. Ahuja, Professor Dr. Vijay Kumar Singh, Dean uh, UPS. Then we have Professor Dr. Balram Gupta, Emeritus Professor of Law Director, Academics, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. Professor Dr. Rajesh Gill from Punjab University. Professor Dr. Anand Pawar, Professor Rajiv Gandhi, National Law University of Patiala, Punjab. Professor Dr. M.K. Bhandari, CEO, Infinity Law Tech Educational Services, Hyderabad. Mr. D.D. D. Sharma, ex-general manager, Punjab and Sindh Bank. My sincere thanks to both the faculty conveners also of this event, Mr. Hartej and Ms. Ashwati. Of course, to the other faculty members also for their unlimited support. Thanks to IT department, especially Mr. Kaushik, for his invaluable contribution to conduct this program. I also convey thanks to all the distinguished participants as their participation reflects their commitment to academics. I thank everyone again and hope this faculty development program provide a platform to have deliberations for the next five days and the critical review of the contemporary issues which have changed the legal scenario altogether. I'm confident that this program will contribute to professional and academic development of all the participants. Thank you so much. Over to you, Ashwati. Thank you very much, ma'am. And a great thanks to you as well for making this FTP come true. With that. Uh, it, I, it's a teamwork, Ashwati. Captain alone never plays the game. It's a teamwork. Thank you so much.
Thank you, ma'am. Dear all, now we move to the first technical session of the day. All participants, please note the following instructions to be followed during all the sessions. All participants are requested to keep yourselves muted at all times. At the end of the session, you may post your questions in the chat box, which shall then be addressed by the moderator at the end of the session. A feedback form will be shared via Google link in this chat box only at the end of the session, which all participants are required to fill. This room would be active for another 15 minutes after the end of the session also to enable you to fill this form. So at a juncture where legal education is increasingly evolving to address multiple disciplines, the role of academia in molding students is of utmost importance. Legal education opens up multiple avenues apart from practicing in a court of law, but the ultimate nexus between law and society remains unhinged. A few decades back in 1975-76, a document titled Notes to Works, a Socially Relevant Legal Education was drafted as a part of a UGC workshop. It reiterated the importance of making legal education socially relevant and interdisciplinary. All these years later, law is still constantly evolving to interact with emerging disciplines as well as the changing society. The relevance of academia becomes paramount here. Our Honorable Chief Guest and Resource Person, Professor Dr. S. Shanta Kumar, Director, Gujarat National Law University, would speak to us on the topic, the role of academia in shaping the next generation advocate. I request you, sir, to kindly take over. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> I thought I'll complete my coffee and speak. Sir, please. Thank you. <clears throat> so thank you, Ashwati. Uh, I hope all the participants have come back for this session. I can see 52 of them. So I want this session uh, to be more interactive. Uh, in fact, uh, in the process, in the middle of my session, I would request all faculty members to give your opinion on certain uh, questions that I would ask. So I would want uh, people to be uh, very active and respond in the chat box because my address is going to be on the responses that what you are going to give. Uh, it's not a prepared speech. Uh, I, I'm uh, in this uh, next, uh, I think we have yeah, one hour, 10 minutes now. In this next one hour, 10 minutes, what I'm, what I'm planning to do is, uh, uh, we will try and address uh, three pertinent uh, issues in this session. Number one, who is the next generation lawyer? Because that is the topic is all about shaping the next generation lawyers. So who is this next generation lawyer? How will he look like? What are his attributes? Right? Whom are we talking about? So this is uh, going to be the uh, first issue that I will be taking up for discussion today. The second thing is that what are the skill sets? or uh, the competencies required to be a next generation lawyer. Right? Hope you are getting this question. Maybe some of you can, with, uh, uh, you can note it down as well. So first is we are going to discuss about who is this next generation lawyer. And second is we are going to find answer for this question that what are the competencies required to be a next generation lawyer. And third and final question that what we are going to discuss today is like uh, how we as law teachers are going to impart these competencies to the next generation. How are we going to do this? So this presentation will be based on three question words. Who, what and how. Right. So who is this next generation lawyer? Right? 
let me share a small let let me share my screen to first of all uh, take you through a different generation of people do you agree that uh, uh, do you agree that uh, there are a different generation of people and there is uh, a gap between one generation to another generation what we call it as the generation gap okay so my first question is to ashwati because you are on my screen uh, ashwati to which generation do you belong what do you call your generation as gen x gen y Gen Honestly, C. at this point, I have started feeling quite old. The moment I started teaching, because the students when they come forward before this, I never felt old. But I cannot say the generation which I belong to. It's it's a confusion now. But yes, sir, to your question, I agree that when time changes, there is a gap that you feel with the people who are young at that point because yeah. the realities which we lived through are different from the realities that are present now. So true. true. Uh, in in fact, uh, I think uh, Ashwati, I don't have the share option. So share share option is not there uh, with me. Host. If host you can, can enable please. the share content, you know, I would want to share some some one. Uh, it's just emails. passed on the sharing rights, sir. So it's yeah. done now. Can you please give me? Yes, I got it. Thank you. I want to share one image right now. Uh, to show or uh, uh, to see who are the different generation of people, right? Can you see this screen? So these are the different uh, type of generation of people who are there. The oldest generation is called the builders, and uh, the next to them is baby boomers i do not know whether you are familiar with these boomers my kids always call me a boomer and they say that you know stop your boomer behavior right because they belong to the different generation and then we have generation x the generation y gen z and the newborn kids now currently who are less than seven years of age, uh, they are called the generation alpha. And uh, what is uh, the difference between uh, each of these generations? Do each generation have a different behavior? Yes. One generation born in a particular period of time is influenced by the environment around them and therefore they behave in a particular order right so this is something uh, which uh, i wanted to show uh, now i'll stop uh, i hope all of you have seen at least realized that there are different generations right and uh, each generation has a specific behavioral pattern that's what i want you to take home today and uh, yeah, you, you can, of course, plenty of material are available about each of these generations. So please do research, you know, this is a homework for, for you. Please do a research on what are the characteristics of each of these generations, what Gen X is capable of doing, what Gen Y is doing, what Gen, X, Gen Z can do, because this is something which is very, very important for a teacher to understand, uh, because these are the guys who are there in your class. Today, your class has a maximum of Gen Y and Gen Z is Gen Z students, right? So you need to understand their characteristics to uh, teach them well. That is, this is one point. Now uh, I'll stop sharing this one, and uh, I would want to share a small video. Uh, so bear with me. I'm just sharing 
a small video. Um, yes. One more minute. <clears throat> Keep your uh, audios on. Uh, increase a bit volume. Uh, this is a small uh, video just to sensitize us on how uh, generations differ right i'm, I'm just trying to use a, a small video young and you were going through this is it possible to be good at this and not be abused at some some level when you're young you know like it's so much it's so tough you got it Go. you able to hear this the video's audio is clear Sir, everything is yeah. so who is this gentleman listen to it who is this gentleman on screen? So there's Jackie Chan on the screen. Jackie Chan, okay. So I know. Go through this kind of uh, the, 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 the process. The process. Yeah. yeah. But these days, so this why when I see some Olympic champion, I really admire them. You know, not like an hour all day. We don't want the training every day. But the teacher, five o'clock, you know, <clears throat> they just get the stick, run, bah, 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 you know, just hit you. Really? This day, you hit, I sue you. Yeah. <laughs> Even the mom, you cannot hit the children. I'm going to sue you. Yeah. <laughs> and all day, the, the teacher just, Pah, you know, we, we, we sit there, nothing to do. The teacher, good morning, teacher. Then he look at me, come. Then I walk. Pah, no, go back. <laughs> you know, they, they just... No reason. Hit for you, no reason. But is that good? Good. Yeah? <laughs> of course, of course. For, for the Western, Western is not good. Mm -hmm. But my personal, I like this kind of training. Because my teacher, so tough. So this is why Samuel Hong Yuan Bell, me, we all the team, we so disciplined. Yeah. You can, I, can, I can go home, put my shoes like this. Uh, I take off my, my clothes, I can flow them. Even in the hotel, um, I match something, I will clean it up. Yeah. My son, okay, I never see the shoes put like this. Yeah. One on the floor, one in the dining room. Yeah. <laughs> Wearing the white shoes, running around. Because yeah. he don't wash his own shoes. But uh, you, socks. you give him a shot? No, I can't. No. He sue me. <laughs> when I see the old people with, like this. We get up, yeah. we bow, we, we let the chair come. My son, you know, like this. Yeah. <laughs> then I, I just come. I, I, after film, uh, six months, nine months, I filming. After filming, I go home, I open the door. And, Hi, there, how are you? <laughs> when I see my dad, I get yeah. up, you know. Right. Oh, take the tea, like this. Right. Th this is your dad was a tough guy, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah. That's a traditional Chinese culture, you know. And you see value in that. Because my son was a school in the U.S. Right. Yeah. And, and that's the reason. Yeah. <laughs> I should stay. Don't jump. Talk to me. Yeah. Yes. How are you? Yeah. I like that movie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know that? Stop. Then he cannot talk. Right. Can, when he not move, he cannot talk. <laughs> That's amazing. Um. Yeah, I hope uh, all of you enjoyed this two minutes clip. And uh, so the idea is that uh, this uh, problem of always talking about uh, one generation, uh, especially the younger generation, is always there, right? It's always there. Uh, my father used to say that you are not uh, like me. Like now I am telling my son that you are not like me. And my son definitely, you know, when he has a son, he is going to tell the same thing. So the point that what I would want to drive home is that every generation is different, is unique. They are, uh, 
brought up uh, in a different environment their needs and priorities are different right and therefore for a teacher to be successful in your class you need to understand that they are a different generation you don't expect the same thing that what you did to your teacher should happen to you if i th- if if, if I, I i have seen many senior faculties coming and complaining sir what has happened in this law school uh, the student you know and walking in the corridor he just say hi and he's going such an insult so i said no madam it's not an insult don't worry don't take it like an insult so that's the way that uh, you know he wants to show respect to you he doesn't mean disrespect you if he says hi you know it doesn't mean disrespect to you that's the way he wants to show respect to you right and it differs so primarily i would want all of you today to understand this factor that the learners are changing the environment is changing the learners are changing and uh, the second thing that i would want to you to notice is the nature of legal practice is changing so i'll get back to you later so first thing is realize that the learners in your class are not the same they are a different set of generations you know they are called as the millennials you know and what are their uh, uh, characteristics the present day gen- uh, learners uh, they grew up with internet they are always connected uh, through instant and text messaging they are always connected through social networking websites they are always connected through their personal media and most important as a teacher what we need to understand and realize is that they have information on demand like i remember you know traveling all the way to my college 30 kilometers uh, one way you know every day up and down 60 kilometers i had to travel to attend the class to seek information because the notes that what my teachers will dictate in the class was very valuable because i was not having access to that material anywhere else otherwise i had to travel far more to get a original source but today that is not the situation the students have information on demand and these kids especially gen y and gen z they are very good at multitasking uh, that's something very very important you know if if you feel that you know he's listening to music don't mean it as a disrespect you know he is capable of doing multiple things he will switch on to his music he uh, keeps his ipad watches his serial and then uh, he keeps writing his notes one will wonder you know i have seen my wife screaming at my kids you know what is this do one at a time but then they are they are made like that they are manufactured like that you know? so they 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 can do multiple things at the same time they are multitasking kids so we need to realize that so we need that that is something which we need to realize and then the most important uh, thing about this generation is uh, due to the population policy uh, of the government of india uh, so most of the families have only one kid so this is and again another different factor that we need to take into account uh, because these are the pampered kids so pampered by their parents because they are the only child at home they have every attention from their father from the mother from their grandfather you know many grandparents have only one grandchild because they have only one son so through that one son they had one grandchild so these kids are the pampered lot so you can't afford to be rude with them because their kids will not accept you understand so the, there are many other things that you need to know as a teacher for a successful teacher it doesn't mean that you are very good at the constitutional law or you are very good at uh, uh, uh indian penal code or good at international law no you will have to be good at all these things understanding your students better that is something very very important they are a pampered lot and therefore you will have to uh, take care of that 
But that is, doesn't mean that you will also have to pamper that. But then you need to respect that factor that these kids are pampered and therefore they will expect the same from you as well as the teacher. Now, uh, uh, if, if you start understanding the millennial student attributes, uh, number one for them, computers are not technologies. Computers, internet, the WWW are as much as a part of millennials lives. So these smart, smartphones, the Android phones have become an additional finger to in there. So they can't live without it. And for them, for these kids, what as teachers we need to know more about is doing is more important than knowing. Knowledge is no longer perceived to be the ultimate goal for these students. The results and actions are considered more important than the accumulation of facts. Facts, though, they will get it at a click of mouse. They will get it faster than you can get it. They are very good at search, right? But what they would want in your classroom is an experience of applying that knowledge, what you are giving on the accumulation of facts that they are getting from the internet. Therefore, doing is more important than knowing. For them, you know, learning is more, uh, closely resembles to that Nintendo game uh, what they uh, what is currently very favorite you know Nintendo if you know Nintendo as a game it symbolizes a trial and error approach to solving problems and uh, for them losing is the fastest way to master a game because losing uh, for these people represents learning as I told you earlier multitasking is a way of life Students are comfortable engaging in several activities simultaneously, working on homework with the music in the background while talking or texting on their cell phone. It's typical of how millennials, you know, get through the day. Another important attribute of millennial is there is zero tolerance for delays. Millennials are raised in a just-in-time service-oriented culture. So they expect and demand, you know, quick turnaround in today's 24 by 7 culture because when uh, I see my kids ordering food on uh, Swiggy or Zomato. They pick a uh, restaurant. I ask them why this and why not this. They say that you know the delivery time will be more. So for them, a quick turnaround is more important than anything else. They do not easily accept delays. And uh, most important, you know, the concern uh, for us as a teacher is that for this generation, consumer and creator are blurring. So in a file sharing, you know, cut and paste world, uh, distinction between a creator, owner and consumer of information, all these things are fading. So for them, anything on the internet is for free for them to use. So the operative assumption is often that uh, if uh, something which is digital, they consider it as uh, everyone's property. So you need to uh, understand uh, 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 how uh how how do you handle uh, these millennials in the classroom very effectively right so I, i'm just going to put an article yeah yes so in the chat box i have given a link uh, for a fantastic article it's a very simple article uh, please, uh, you know, copy paste this link and then uh, read it at your convenience. It's very, very uh, easy uh, to understand how to engage these millennial students in your classroom, right? In fact, you know, I, I'm not teaching you uh, just by reading books. I'm I'm just sharing my experiences with you, and I I've I've found it very, very uh, convenient, and uh, I've, I've I'm rather you know quite successful. Uh, uh, in using these methods uh, by treating millennials the way they wish to be treated and then more of my classroom is more of doing rather than you know listening or talking so that's how i changed the environment and uh, this article was uh, really an eye opener for me so uh, that is something because uh, under that article you will see that uh, uh, the author talks about five strategies one is, you know, you should start using research-based methods. Research uh, actually suggests that millennials prefers uh, a variety of active learning methods. 
Now, for this, uh, I told you that uh, uh, we need to actually uh, uh, look at uh, how do we even keep the layout of the class, right? So let me share you to explain how uh, this is different. Mm -hmm. Right. So wh what I've done is I've just Googled for uh, local edge classroom. OK. Uh, This is the Google image. You are able to see the image. So number of classrooms are there. Yes, right. it's visible. So uh, I hope your classrooms are also like this. So there are a number of classrooms which are shown. I just Googled for you. You can see in the search window. Uh, I have uh, typed as law college classroom. And I can see, you know, classrooms, some LJD law college, some GLS law college. ALC Law College, Dayanand College of Law Contour, Lloyd College, Great Noida. All these classrooms are there. Now, now what I do, I will, I, 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 I have now typed another thing in this thing. So I'm just giving a modern learning space. So you see a different kind of picture now. Do you see a different picture? So the modern classroom, how does it look like? Can you see that? You know, this is how a modern classroom looks like. Can you see this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. Can you see this? Yes, so sir. What is, the, what is the difference that we find in these modern classrooms? See this classroom. That what I am showing. Right? See this classroom. I think if you have kids uh, at home and if you are taking them to a nursery school, uh, you must be, you must have seen their classrooms. Uh, is, it a, is it something different from the classrooms that what we have in the universities? So nowadays in the schools, at least, you know, because they, they respond to changes because the generation is changing and then the school teachers accept that and then they change a lot. Uh, you will see that, you know, previously when we go for conferences, uh, chairs will be kept in a row, like a theater format. But now you go attend some programs in some five star hotels, in the banquet halls. You don't see that kind of an arrangement, isn't it? Chairs are not kept in one after the one behind the another. So there are tables around and then five, six people sit in a group. There are different groups sitting, right? And that's how the classrooms are now, modern classrooms are supposed to be. And this is all about interactive learning. Please uh, uh, read, uh, you can you can just Google for uh, uh, articles on active learning uh, by Sophie Sparrow, right? So I'll just write her name. In fact, Sophie regularly visits India. Uh, maybe sometime when she is in India, you should invite her to SRM. She'll be happy to come. Uh, so Sophie Sparrow is a pioneer. Uh, you know, there is an International Institute of Teaching and Learning in US as part of uh, Gonzaga University. And in fact, she, she is an office bearer. Uh, and she had written wonderful books. Just to Google for uh, Sophie Sparrow. Do you get something information on Sophie Sparrow? So you can see the see here, no professor of law, University of New Hampshire. Yes. Yes. Right? She's a Fulbright fellow to India. Uh, and in fact, uh, she happily accepts invitation from any universities and then she goes and visits. In fact, she's an honorary professor at NLU Delhi as well. She has written plenty on uh, 
active learning right so if you and for active learning one important thing is that you should as a teacher you should uh, always ask questions uh, uh, helping students to find answers uh, rather than you know giving them answers right like uh, now i said you know uh, please look at uh, sophie sparrow so you should tell your class you know the students that take your phones uh, on the google page just google for sophie sparrow right and one of you why don't you stand up and read what have you read right so this is what you know making students doing something there are two options one is you can uh, you know tell that you know sophie sparrow is a great author she is a professor of law with new hampshire university she is a fulbright scholar to india she can come she can uh, teach you on active learning and all these things but then if you make the students to do and find some information about you know in fact that's what i do in my even in my jury students class so i i make them sit uh, make students sit in different groups right uh, make them sit in a circle and then say that each group will now find out uh, use uh, google and find out uh, five important definitions of law right so i i say that i i'll give you 10 minutes time hmm? to google discuss amongst yourself and pick five important definitions of law and write it in your notebook right you should write five definitions and when i call you you should come to this uh, stage and you should write on the board one important definition with, and you explain why you liked this definition the most right and uh, you know then i go around helping students find out then you know if i see austin's definition again in another table i tell them see already that table they have taken this definition why don't you look for some other definition then i go there and some other, some other, some of the student i tell them that oh this is bentham's definition this is already been taken by another group i peeped into that what work that what they are doing so why don't you do that right so this is uh and after the 10 minutes then again you know i call each one of them from the group and then i ask them to tell you know what are the five definitions that you have you read it out from your notebook and then uh, out of that you should explain uh, one definition uh, giving specially the reason why you like this definition the most right so now uh, what happens is Uh, from every group one one student uh, comes to the stage and then he starts talking so the jurisprudence classroom which is supposed to be very very boring because you know generally what we do as teacher we go with the say set of definitions and then start uh, you know dictating them the definition and then start explaining each and every definition and by the time student go to sleep now in this uh, uh, model uh, you first you first 5 minutes you tell them that this is the exercise that we are going to do we are trying to go find out the definition for the word law which is very very important for a law student you need to know what is law and this is something which is very essential for you to do so you will have to create interest in them for the first few minutes and then you will have to ask them uh, uh, and also explain them the importance of doing this very sincerely and then when the class is with you then divide them into group to say that you know okay you go sit with your friends you can now change your places wherever you want you can sit in a group and then they they move around in the class so that that again you know because one thing that we need to realize is the attention span for our students is not 50 minutes so you can't teach them for 50 minutes every 5 minute if you don't break your class if you do not give a break to them and if you do not uh distract them and bring them back they are gone physically they are present in your class but then mentally they are not with you. so their attention span is so 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 short now that if you can do it every second minute to third minute also that's all their retention capacity is so you will have to innovate uh, methods and see that you know how do you do that then you know i 
i then asked them to discuss which definition is best so they will write it down in their notebook all of them will write down you know five five definitions because i will not tell them that whom i am going to call so everybody will be alert everybody will have to write notes and then you know and then i pick student so then in, during my rounds in the next in the next 10 minutes going around the class i know who is not working in the group and then i note it down in my chat and then i call them right so the moment the first guy comes the rest of them gets alert so then 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 they keep start working and then because they don't want to cut a sorry figure in front of the whole class so they want to try to project themselves that they are great so that is their natural ego within them and therefore we will have to make use of that ego one on that you will be able to do only when you start playing with their ego right so you call one of them and say that uh, you are the best in your group i saw that you are the one who was working very hard and helping others understand this why don't you come now and read it out so he reads out he reads out uh, then i asked him that why do you consider this okay so you discuss go go back to your group and ask them which one out of this five definition is the best according to your group give me reasons he i mean again he goes back takes help from his group and then again he comes back so there is a lot of movement in and around the classroom you know a lot of activities keep happening and then yeah so for me without much efforts at least you know 25 definitions of law is conveyed in the class which would have taken me at least four classrooms four lectures explaining them you know one by one what is this but in this group activity and this is what is called active learning this is what is called as learning by doing so you make uh, you give opportunities for students to do this so likewise you know you see why i went for a jurisprudence classes jurisprudence is not a subject which i teach i teach environmental and i always keep my class very active uh, so when i was discussing this experience with my faculty colleagues one faculty colleague challenged me sir aapko to environmental hai usme kuch bhi kar sakte hai what will you do in a subject like jurisprudence then i said okay come on give me this subject which what is your topic he said sir i have just started i am just discussing what is law so come you now come and play with the students he challenged me then i said okay come let's go so i went to the class and i made this class jurisprudence class so interesting that after 10 15 day, days i found that a group of students walking in the corridor and they were pulling me by my hand sir you please come and teach jurisprudence then i called the teacher see i said you know you should not play with me right see now they don't want you to teach your students they want me to teach now you will get a very bad feedback right so start you know working on it so it is it's, it's it's always possible whatever subjects that you teach you know contract law so take a take a take a rental agreement to that what you have uh, printed out from the internet and then circulated to the class and ask them from the agreement of 3 4 page you know one rental agreement ask them to find out which is offer which is acceptance which is the consideration which are the paragraph which talks about the validity of the contract right so they have actually seen a contract and they have actually uh, looked at you know where an offer is used where an acceptance is conveyed how an acceptance is conveyed what is the like how time is in essence of a contract is conveyed like all these things you know like so you 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 make people do so that's where uh, uh, something that what you need to do i think i have spent a lot of time in this first part of the same thing so i'm planning to move now so this is this is what something uh, which i want to tell, tell you uh, because uh, i do not know how many of you are uh, familiar with this word called andragogy andragogy so i have typed it in the chat can you see the spelling andragogy so how many i do not know how many of you are familiar with it uh, in fact this is what is uh, uh, what uh, this is the science with which teachers are need to be familiar with not pedagogy pedagogy is the science of dealing with kids you know you know the word pedo 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 pediatrics pediatrics means for newborn babies you know so that pedagogy will not work andragogy is the science of teaching adults 
and you have in your law schools only adult no no more kids and uh, you, you 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 can't treat them as kids you will have to treat them as adults the problem is if you approach if you use pedagogical methods in an adult setting you will fail so you will have to understand andragogy and it's not you know uh, synonymous with each other there is a sea of difference between andragogy and pedagogy and therefore you will have to learn uh, that difference between andragogy and pedagogy to uh, gel well with your students so that you meet their expectations students are happy with what you do in the class right now <clears throat> So the next uh, thing that what I uh, want to convey is the first point uh, so far I have emphasized that the learners are changing. There is a new generation in our classroom. That is, I hope all of you agree with me. The next thing that what I would want to uh, do in the next 10, 15 minutes uh, is uh, to convey that the nature of legal practice is changing right uh, now a, a, a trend is a started entering the practice of law uh, where fewer cases go to trial before the court so this is a alarming fact which means there will be very few opportunities for young lawyers to have their day in a court so the job is shrinking so the next generation lawyer is not the one who will stand in the court and argue cases then what will he do he will be doing a lot many things right he will uh, be involved in negotiations he will be involved in conciliation he will be involved in mediation he will be involved in arbitration he will be using AI and Internet of Things. He will be using blockchain and crypto. He will be using big data and machine learning. And with all these technologies around him, the focus will now shift from the present day dispute resolution to dispute avoidance. With most of the legal work now shifting to law firms who are doing due diligence i'll tell you days are not very far that lawyers will have very limited work in the courts so do you agree with me or not so the nature of law see when the legal education system even today uh, the the curriculum as this as recommended by the bar council of india uh, he aims that uh, or has a sole object that the students are prepared for the bar they are prepared for litigation. So we focus more on an adversarial role uh, to be played by the lawyers. And then uh, this is the prime focus of law schools, training them to be lawyers in a court of law. But uh, today, you you know, like, you know, if I look at my law school, I hardly see 30% of the students taking up litigation. Hardly. Right? So uh the, most of them prefer to do something else right and in fact uh, uh, at, at GNLU we have a legal incubation cell i think i'm proud that uh, the only law school to have an incubation center like engineering colleges so we have an incubation cell to encourage uh, our students to become entrepreneurs so to come up with business ideas so any idea any student coming with a business idea the same day we pay them two lakh rupees to support them to start their business idea so that you know money should not be a problem for students so they immediately start doing businesses and uh, last year our student got a national award for entrepreneurship right uh, from the honorable prime minister so this is one example to show that you know the law students are not prepared for life only to wear black coats, go and stand in a court of law, 
uh, and uh, in fact my son graduated uh, in 2018 until date he has not worn a black coat and he refuses to write the bar examination he was not willing to even go for an enrollment but then due to my compulsion he came for an enrollment but otherwise he did not give a bar examination otherwise but then what is he doing for his life he is doing amazingly well in his life advising clients uh, like uh, tatas and uh, big clients and doing their corporate advisory work right so he doesn't uh, want to go for litigation he, he is uh, allergic to the scenario in the court he says that i can't stand in the corridor like that in a court hall i don't want to do that right so people are you know, and that is one only one case uh, what's there in my family that i am sharing and i am seeing my students at my university as well 70% of them get placed on day one like last year our placement we had a record placement so we had on day 0 72 placements right offers uh, and the minimum package was 12 lakhs and the maximum was 18 lakhs right on on one day one day placement scenario and after beyond that you know the fourth year students have a lot of ppos they they come with a lot of ppos almost around 20 30 of them already had a ppo they did not even sit for placement those who sat for placement 72 of them got offers so more than 100 on day one we we could place right so uh, and then you know these are not the typical uh, uh, courtroom lawyers they they are recruited by different agencies for different purposes and that's what is the legal profession uh, is uh, changing so we need to recognize that the legal practice is changing and therefore uh, we need to uh, shape them so it it is a, it, it, therefore uh, we need to uh, be uh, aware of uh these two things that is one is the generation in the classroom is changing number two the nature of legal practice is changing and therefore we need to find out how we need to uh uh train them shape them so that's what is the topic shaping the next generation lawyer how are we going to shape them so for that we need to know uh what are the competencies that the next generation lawyer is expected to possess what are the competencies right because uh, that is that is what is the most important uh, thing uh, we need to know as teachers as law schools once we know that these are the competencies our students need to uh, possess for a successful practice then we start giving them if we do not know what exactly is a is the requirement for an next generation lawyer how will we give them you understand this is this is something basic you need to know what an next generation like you know uh, you many of you must have heard this story you know of a, a ship was loaded and it was ready to leave the port right so since i am involved with maritime university so bear with me for giving examples of ships right so a ship was about to leave the port you know it was all fully loaded with cargoes so it was to leave the port uh so the captain uh, gave the sign and uh, but the engine was not starting now he called his mechanics you know they were not able to find out what exactly is the problem uh, they called uh, some uh, somebody then they said that you know this engine has to be done this has to be replaced uh, and all these things and therefore uh, 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 th this will take at least 2 3 days and this will involve you know 5 lakh rupees cost so the captain was worried not about the cost but about this 2 3 days right then he was asking you know is there anybody who can resolve this you know he went for a second opinion so somebody advised him that you know there is a old mechanic he is not a qualified engineer but there is a mechanic nearby maybe we can show him he he is known to solve problems very quickly 
let's call him so a old guy shabbily dressed so he he not properly trained in engineering colleges so he he just came he went around and he just tried to start the engine then at looking at that he said that okay i'll i'll start this engine in next uh, 15 minutes uh, but uh, you will have to pay me 50000 rupees so the captain said uh, oh i agree with you you know if you can start it in 50 don't worry about 50000 i'll give you then he went around and then you know picked up a hammer and then he opened the uh, the hood of the engine and then he just pulled out a wire just you know normal the way the mechanics used to do in his mouth he just broke that wire and then he typed it and put a tape on it and then hit it on hit that part on a, with his hammer and then he asked the captain now you start so the captain started and the engine started perfectly all right now uh, this fellow this mechanic uh, gave an invoice for 50000 rupees captain was uh, uh, he did not agree what is this you did not do anything you just picked the wire and connected it and then you did not even do work for 5 minutes why are you charging 50000 right then he said no 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 that 50000 is not for uh, that you know one hit of the hammer for that it's just 5 rupees remaining you know 49000 995 rupees is for the knowledge of knowing where to hit right so that is the thing so you need to train your students with that knowledge you know what will actually help them to hit at the right place to be successful so that is something which we need to learn and uh, i'll again share with my own experience uh, 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 in 2018 uh, uh, i i was uh, you know fortunate enough uh, to be selected for a project called the tuning india project 2017 it was called the tuning india project which was an erasmus plus project executed by a university called university of dusto in bilbao spain and then uh, they were uh, involved in an exercise of uh, preparing a list of competencies for four fields one is law second one was medicine and uh, third one was uh, ict uh, fourth one was uh, for education for teachers so what are the competencies required you know because uh, they felt that uh, uh, preparing uh, a list of competencies defining these competencies Uh, are very very important because of globalization now every country the graduates passing out from every country the knowledge level should be comparable the knowledge should be compatible with each other and then you know uh, it also brings in transparency that uh, everybody a recruiter in united states of america will come to know that what are your program outcome and what are the course outcomes that you have and uh, they believe that your students have acquired that course outcome who have graduated from your school so many of you uh, must be you know frowning when your iqac team asks you to prepare the cvos and pvos and psos uh, you will be really fed up why is that they are asking me to draft all these things where is it going to be helpful this is definitely going to help uh, our students in uh, ensuring an international mobility because uh, the universities The, the 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 recruiters outside the country will not know your university but will be able to decide on your students competencies looking at your uh, course outcomes and the project out uh, the, the program outcomes and the program specific outcomes so that is the reason why you know nac is insisting nba is insisting everybody else is insisting on you know coming out with the, the course outcomes and the program outcomes this is something very very important and uh, Uh, now uh, uh, i said you know i was part of the uh, project uh, uh, in fact i was i was also elected as the coordinator for the law group i was uh, heading the law group the leading the law group uh, and there were seven other eight other professors were there uh, who were helping me in identifying 
a list of competencies. I think now uh, let's involve all of you in uh, uh, requesting you. Uh, I'll, I'll request each one of you. Can you please put on the chat box that what are the competencies that you feel that a graduate, a law graduate must have? Right? What are the competencies? Right? So can you can you just uh, yeah? We will we'll just uh, take five minutes. Now it is what time? Yeah. Uh, yes, it's it's, it's eleven forty two. So maybe for next three four minutes we will look about yeah one somebody has written uh, vocabulary. So the student should possess a sound knowledge of uh, all appropriate terms, right? So their legal vocabulary should be great so that they know what word to use at the appropriate time and place. Right? That's right. Wonderful. They need to be the, the, the they must be well spoken. Right. Yeah, the presentation skills, the speaking skills. Yeah. Dr. Karupaswami is writing critical thinking skills. So they must have these skills. Dr. Prasanna. Uh, is writing that they must be aware of rights and duties. Uh, Dr. Desha is writing that they should know how to apply law. Right? They should. Uh, Dr. Prasanna is again writing uh, that uh, they should be aware of all legal remedies. Right? And uh, you can see Sagar writing that they should have a multidisciplinary thought process. They should have Dr. Karup Sami says that they should have excellent communication skills. Uh, Disha says that they must know how to counsel their clients. So, someone named Lotwell writes that uh, knowledge of the society is important. Deepshika is telling drafting skills is very important. So Dr. Karup Sami is writing again that presence of mind is very important. Anubha is telling. Convincing power is very, very important. Mm. Law 9, to identify the potential areas of future disputes and how to avoid them. See, yeah, dispute avoidance, they do need to know. Dr. Prasanna Rani says how to impress the court. And uh, Sandhya is telling developing skill. Which skill? Right? So you, you, you see that, you know, uh, this is what is the exercise we did because we did not know where to start. And when we actually uh, were trying to find out whether there is any model available, we did not get a ready-made model. Yeah, somebody is writing, you know, who's this? Hartej is writing teamwork. Uh, Sushila is telling analytical skills. Right. So you like this we also uh, what we did was we sat the whole day uh, first each one of us prepared our own list and then each one of us uh, presented to the others that this is what i have done then everybody else said i have also written this i have also written this so whatever was commonly written we picked up that list right and then we had a, a collective list of uh, 25 uh, some essential skills, right? And the, those 25 essential skills, uh, we we could uh, uh, club it under uh, uh, three heads: the knowledge what one must possess, the skill that one must possess, right? And the attitude that one must possess so we after a long exercise of course you um, know i am telling it in five ten minutes but this took us almost uh, two years uh, to reach at this level uh, that what i've done because a lot of consultation a lot of rigorous exercises have happened and then uh, we also did not stop with our own opinion uh, we uh, prepared this list and circulated uh, with uh, thousands of people and asking them uh, to find out what is their uh, views on these skill sets, whether these are actually required, not required. We ask them to grade it, which is most important, which is less important, which is not important. 
and you know accordingly we did a study that's a different exercise i i think i need one more session to explain that uh, i'm sure that you will not be able to give me that session uh, so uh, i'll i'll now share my screen um, to show you what are the different competencies that what our our team prepared which is presented to the european union as part of the erasmus plus project uh, let me sorry i'll i'll just share you on screen uh, three slides uh, yes yeah. can you see this slide uh, Mm, I think let me put it on the full screen. Yes, yeah. yeah, you can you can see this, right? And so the 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 uh, So these are some of the specific competencies. Are you able to read it? Yes, sir. Yes, it's clear, sir. Yeah. So can one of you volunteer to read it? I think one yes, of the sir. people who have joined as panelists can read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. May I? Yes, please, Savasti. Yes, sir. So the first one is knowledge and understanding of basic legal theories, concepts, and laws. Second is knowledge and understanding of socio-economic and political context and taking them into consideration in the creation, interpretation and application of law. Third, command over legal language and official language of the court. Fourth, knowledge and understanding of various dispute resolution systems. Fifth, ability to learn and derive appropriately the beneficial components of legal systems of other jurisdictions. So do you all agree with this? These are important. Uh, then let's look at the skills. So we have identified some 14 skills that what uh, uh, the next generation lawyer should possess. Yes, so can I request? Yes, sir. So firstly, to have acquired legal drafting skills. Second, capacity to read objectively and interpret legal texts in context. Third, capacity to dissect the facts and identify core facts in issue. Fourth, capacity to find and apply law to the facts in issue. Fifth, capacity to identify the ratio decedenda and obiter dicta in judicial decisions. Sixth, ability to do quality legal research, both doctrinal and empirical. Seventh, capacity to identify the gaps in law and innovate for legal reform. Eighth, ability for legal and judicial reasoning. Ninth, ability to simplify and explain law to the common man. Tenth, ability to plead his case efficiently. Eleventh, ability to examine and cross-examine witnesses. Twelfth, ability to critically analyze legal instruments. Thirteenth, ability to foresee consequences when enacting and interpreting the law. Fourteenth, ability to harmonize the letter and spirit of law. Yeah. And finally, we prepared a list of attitudes that a successful lawyer must possess. So these are the attitudes. Yeah. Firstly, to have developed code drafts and etiquette. Second, ability to practice law without compromising professional ethics. Third, ability to do pro bono advocacy and to take up socio-legal outreach programs. Fourth, ability to work as a legal expert in transdisciplinary system. Capac fifth, capacity to act honestly, diligently, and transparently in all professional endeavors. Sixth, commitment to justice and fairness in all situations. Yes. So, uh, this is a long list, of course. Uh, the process was very, very lengthy one. We prepared uh, a, a, loss, a lot of uh, uh, such competencies, which is expected of uh, a law graduate, and then uh, deliberated, and then 
we also shared it as i said with multiple stakeholders employers teachers students law graduates lawyers judges and asked them to rate it and then we did a lot of exercise and then we finally prepared that document so the idea is uh, that uh, you know as teachers we need to know number one uh, the skills that are essential for a law student to acquire when he is in the law school so that when he graduates he will be able to use all those skills uh, for his benefit for the benefit of the society for the benefit of the nation right so this is what is uh, this exercise is all about uh, but then you know now let's introspect ourselves are we doing it? when when you uh, plan for your course when you plan for your lecture do you keep this in mind whether this topic that what i am going to discuss today how is it going to help my student acquire any of these skills right so for that first of all number one you need to have an inventory of skills right so how many of us have this inventory of skills required for uh, lawyers do we have one and whether anyone in india has one uh, to my knowledge because I, I was part of this study you know uh, to my knowledge i i did not come across i did not come across any such exercise happening uh, on this front uh, but uh, uh, i i could find one such exercise uh, which which happened uh, at berkeley uh, university of california in united states of america they have done some uh, thing like so let me let me share this uh, slide which talks about the berkeley factors right uh, so this is the berkeley factors let me uh, share this uh, slide with all of you to see whether so you able to see this 26 lawyering effectiveness factors uh, so it's visible but the font is really small that's very small because i just took a, a screenshot and added. i want to put it in one slide so maybe i'll just circulate this inventory or you can you can even google for it, it i got it from google sure sir Sure, right? sir. So you, you just Google for 26 lawyering effectiveness factors inventory. Right? So this is a list, you know, this is a stock taking of what exactly uh, we need. Right? Uh, what is the, this is an inventory of uh, skills which, which can make our lawyers very effective. So this exercise was done by uh, the University of uh, uh, California at Berkeley, the UC Berkeley, and then uh, uh, you'll see that there is again another, uh, there's 26 lawyering effectiveness factors. You can, you can see that, you know, I have given credit to those two authors, Major and Sheldon, uh, who have written about all those 26 lawyering effectiveness skills, analysis and reasoning, creativity, innovation problem solving practical judgment providing advice fact finding researching the law speaking writing listening influencing and advocating questioning and interviewing negotiation skills strategic planning organizing and managing own work organizing and managing others work right then evaluation development and mentoring developing relationship within the legal profession networking and business development community involvement and service, integrity and honesty, stress management, passion and engagement, diligence, self-development, be able to see the world through the eyes of others. No? Empathy. So this is, this is something. So this is, uh, uh, this is what I want all of you to introspect today. Take home today and uh, just find out how many things, you know, we, we are actually providing opportunities for our students. You know, are we 
uh, are are we giving opportunities uh, for students to listen no, no not listening to a lecture that's not the listening skills when you talk something when you, when you uh, when you have a problem you talk about that problem whether the students listen to you whether they accurately perceive what is being told directly and subtly right because listening is something very very essential skill for a lawyer when a client comes he will be telling a lot of stories the first thing that a lawyer does is listen then he understands then he has to filter what is the fact which is relevant and what is not relevant and then he will have to advise right and then he will have to speak he will have to write yeah he will have to question he will have to interview he will have to negotiate he will have to strategically plan it. how many how many of us how many law schools you know talk about uh, time management you know stress management do we teach all those things you know? like at my law school you know so we we do not uh, uh, you know tell how students should handle stress instead what we have done is we have in the hostels we have replaced all the fan uh, rods anti suicide fan rods right so hostels are fitted with anti suicide fan rods now what will happen is if somebody wants to commit suicide if he wants to pull himself hang himself on a fan now this rod will come down immediately so it will fail his attempt now is this what a law school is supposed to do no but are we teachers doing something on this so this is something you know which i would want all of you know about it and uh, as i said now let me come to the last uh, uh, phase of uh, my lecture what i said uh, what were the, the third question that how do we impart those competencies how do we impart those competencies how do we access those competencies you know that is something which is very very important uh, number one for imparting these competencies uh, first of all you need to possess all these competencies right so for that programs like this will help so therefore in fact uh, you know we need to prepare an fdp uh, looking at these competencies and each competency should be a session if we have 26 competencies we are talking about 25 26 competencies we need to have 25 26 sessions on each of this competency and then you know uh, sit in a group not you know i, I do not believe in fdp is happening through uh, this internet or online because i know many of us have just logged in many switched off the camera and i do not know what they are doing so it also becomes very very difficult like for example you know i can speak for myself the interest with which I would have delivered this on campus, I'm just talking with 30-40% interest. Because, it, it, because I, I do not know my audience. I do not know to whom I am talking. I, do not, I can't look into their eyes. I do not know uh, whether they are receiving it in the right perspective or not. So I can hardly see two or three people on my screen. And then uh, this is all about online. So, I think you know the the FDP need to have uh, should be completely on competencies. We need to have uh, 26 sessions on 26 factors, and you know each factor talking about it, so that the teachers at the end of the FDP will go with all these 26 uh, competencies, which will help them uh, to impart these competencies to the students. So I can see the uh, dean on screen. So it's it's time. That the dean has come on screen to tell me that uh, I should wind up. So that's what. No, no, no. I I, I was throughout <laughs> there, but no. just now you pointed out that I can just see the <laughs> you know video <laughs> turned off. So I thought I yes. must show my presence. Yes. You can take uh, more time. You can no, no, take no. more time. I, I I do not. In fact, I have another meeting schedule. So this is the last slide that I would want to talk. In fact, I read it out in the morning as well. Uh, uh, all these things. You know, it will take time, it will require dedication, it will require uh, the willpower, uh, you will need to make healthy decisions, it requires sacrifice, 
uh, there will be temptation uh, temptations but as i told you i promise you when you reach your goal it's really worth it i have personally gone through all this hell uh, so whatever i am today is because of uh, many healthy decisions that i have taken uh, many sacrifices that i have made uh, uh, a lot of dedication uh, and the will power with which i have worked it has actually helped me to come up in the career later uh, and i am sure if i can do it everybody else can also do it and i wish all the participants all the very best and uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to srm university for uh, uh, calling me and uh, giving me this opportunity thank you so much thank you very much sir that was a very enlightening session and like you mentioned uh, ashwati ashwati let me ask him just one question okay uh, sir uh, like what i feel i have also been in this field for a very long time uh, what am i uh, observing is that very few students join litigation true uh, most of them go for corporate jobs and all and they then don't have that kind of patience Mm -hmm. that they are getting just 10 15000 per month for 3 years mm -hmm. and when they become independent then only you know they start earning mm -hmm. so do you think somewhere uh, we are not playing the proper role or is it just the financial aspect no uh, see as a law school i i think that uh, we should not prepare them only for litigation you know i'm just if, i'm just taking one aspect because yeah, you know uh, like yeah. so i think we should not uh, you know uh, uh, many it at many platforms when we invite judges they always speak about this nlu students don't join litigation uh, all of them are going to the corporate sector in fact students should be allowed to carry on their passion right whatever they would want to got wherever whatever gives them the happiness if litigation gives happiness of course you can't stop anyone entering litigation many of them are into it litigation many of them after getting a degree join their businesses uh, many of them uh, uh, at least you know as i give you an example in my law school i have 20 startups now working you know i have my own incubation center and then there are 20 startups you know we have incorporated them as companies and then they are working with the seed money that what we have invested in them so we are we are promoting entrepreneurship so we are of course you know giving opportunities for students to go and join law firms uh, they are working with as, as many of them are, are going and uh, joining in house councils you know starting they intern with adanis and ambanis and then they work and uh, Uh, go ahead and look for a job in uh, some of these multinational corporations as in-house counsels, banks as in-house counsels. So a lot of things, you know. So that's what we need not. As a law school, our focus should not be on preparing them for litigation. This is my submission. There are a lot many things. So that is why the next generation lawyer is not going to go for litigation because with the privatization of litigation, uh, the litigations are going to come down drastically. what i mean by privatization is so settling disputes outside the court through mediation but through arbitration you appoint your own judge and you get your own award uh, this is privatization you pay for it you pay for the venue you pay for the judge you pay for the secretarial assistants you pay for everything and you get an award which will be implemented so with this privatization of justice uh, i feel that uh, you know uh, people are not going to go to the courts anymore very very little people will be there so i think law school should also take cognizance of this changing scenario uh, we should start preparing students uh, for alternative career right thank you that so much where, that is where our teachers need uh, an orientation on all these things what are the different uh, career opportunities where these students are currently going and how do we prepare them for those career options yeah that is that is yeah. where we can do as law teachers understand all these things and do that yes employability is always very important true, true, true. because ultimately you know though everybody says that you know should study for knowledge sake but then ultimately i will be benefited by my knowledge only when it can take care of my job. livelihood
right otherwise what is the point you know i, I don't want to die like subramanya bharati is the great poet you know who wrote such beautiful poems for the country you know awakening nationalism but then ultimately he ended up having no meal to feed for himself and for his wife that is the story what we have learnt about subramanyam bharati in tamil nadu right so the if, if my knowledge is not providing is not going to take care of my livelihood I, that knowledge is meaningless so it should take care of my livelihood and it should take care of me so nicely that i will be able to take care of so many other people right only when i have something surplus i can think of helping others yes otherwise also covid 19 has uh, you know uh, greatly impacted this profession because True. most of the young lawyers who had become recently independent in fact True. they had to close down their offices yes uh, terrible difficulties yes thank you so much sir ashwati over to you thank you so much sir with your permission can we take a couple more of questions if you have yes, if there are if there are any questions here Yes, sir. there's one question from uh, Ms. Disha Atri. She asked about uh, if you could shed some light on the relevance of written projects in this generation of law students, given that now most of them just resort to copy paste it from the web. So how do we make yes. them do that? Mm. Like, you know, uh, for example, when I was teaching environmental law, I asked them write projects, then they give projects, right? This the same speed in which I asked, they submitted, and uh, you know I really got fed up. I said that, see, I'll not. I, I I want you to do a project, but I don't want you to present that project in written form. So the form I want is, I want a video of a spot. Right? It's 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 a team project. Two of you can do, right? One should be seen on the screen. The, while the other is taking a video and it's not that one person should always be on the screen so you should mutually be there on the screen each other at every minute go to a spot environmentally affected right uh, talk to the stakeholders find out what are the causes of the problem and then you know do a study on what laws are affected violated and you know how do you think that this problem could be remedied i said you just present a 5 minute video right uh, this uh, happened in gurgaon uh, when i was teaching uh, environmental law uh, one student project uh, he he along with his friend uh, uh, friend went to a uh, a pond you know it is near ifko chowk people who know gurgaon now it's near ifko chowk there used to be a big lake uh, a pond it was a lake once upon a time now it is almost it was almost at a dying stage because of encroachments and all these things so this boy was living nearby so he took it as a project and then uh, he went around you know with his camera uh, shooting and uh, with his friend talking about uh, the pond the encroachments the shops uh, and then he went and asked the counselor counselor said you know i can't do anything you know i am just a small uh, fly so i can't do anything you know if at all something has to be done the uh, the collector has to do then this boy went along with the friend he went to the district collector at gurgaon and asked him sir this is a project i am doing and i am just worried about this condition of this lake which has now shrunk into a small pond uh, so i would want to know uh, as a law enforcing authority what is your role and what is your view on it can i just take a 30 minutes bite of yours right so the collector said no 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 not today i am busy you come after uh, 10 days and then he just chased him away so but this boy was very persistent so after 10 days uh, he went to the collector and the collector said that uh, uh, okay i'll give you the interview but did you go to the pond he said no i did not see that you go and see the pond and then come for the interview then only you can ask relevant questions then this boy went to the pond that pond was completely reclaimed completely reclaimed it became so beautiful completely a boundary wall all the encroachments were thrown, removed the boundary wall was constructed in a short span of time right and uh, that place looks very very beautiful right actually this project of my student 
uh, what I asked him to do. Just, you know, it, it just came like that. And then it was a spark in the mind, uh, which this boy did it, you know, with utmost sincerity. And then uh, this this entire, this project only has actually got me that, uh, the award from the Asian Development Bank, that how a teacher can uh, inspire the students to bring about some actual change in the society. And in fact, uh, that batch, actually two, three other things. One went into the river Yamuna to find out how the waste is being dumped. And then they hired a boat. They went into the river. Uh, from the riverside, they took a video of all the pipelines from where the sewage was getting discharged into river Yamuna. And then, you know, that really uh threatened people in yamuna so people that uh, sewage treatment plants everything became all right in a short span of time that was another thing second was the another important project was uh, uh that electric cremate cremate cremation was not functioning people were using a lot of wood for burying the dead bodies so one girl went into that burial ground and then she took a video of all these things and then if this cremation ground you know if that electrical cremation could work how many tons of wood could be saved she made a study she made a presentation within few days that electrical crematorium started becoming functional right so the, these are some of the changes that what uh, you as a teacher can uh, initiate and uh, actually it's 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 our students who can uh, you know really if you can inspire your students they will definitely do wonders and they will definitely bring uh, laurels to you right and uh, i i see that all these students in that particular batch who did this uh, project uh, are today you know very very successful practitioners one is practicing at ngt and almost every day is coming out with the landmark orders right i'm happy that i could inspire them in a batch of you know 120 people at least three four of them if i could make them very socially responsible lawyer i'm really proud and i'm happy that i have done my job as a teacher thank you thank you very you much you will have to keep innovating it you know so this is this is all it's not written anywhere so you will have to keep innovating looking looking at your own students their capabilities uh their their the, the environment in your law school the ecosystem because i know many many law schools the principals will not be happy when a teacher wants to innovate your own colleagues will not be happy they'll say that kya bakwas karta hai, bina padha hai. And instead of teaching he is just making students you know play around kya hai. so that that kind of things will be there so you will have to take care of all these local situations and environment to see that what good you can do under the prevailing circumstances with all the limitations around us Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. This was really great listening to you. Sir, now uh, may I want to request Mr. Hardeep Singh Kocher, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Law, SRM University, to propose a formal vote of thanks for the session. Uh, thank you, Ashwati. Uh, I, Hardeep Singh Kocher, on behalf of SRM University, would like to thank Professor Shanta Kumar for gracing us with his presence and taking our time from his schedule. Uh, especially in the inaugural session and also in this session. He has effectively guided us today as to how to be better at our profession. Uh, during his session, he has shed light on the difference in generational outlooks uh, on modern learning spaces. Most importantly, he stated that it is important to help students reach answers rather than giving them answers themselves. And to th that end, we need to uh, manage the attention spans of students. We need to teach them through examples and through active learning. And he's given us examples of active learning as well. Uh, he stated that we need to focus on andragogy rather than pedagogy, uh, because that is how we need to teach the adults who come into our class. And he effectively described how the nature of the legal practice itself has changed. And the current generation of advocates are not there only to practice in front of courts. There are wide areas of practice available to them and for that end they need to maintain or possess certain competencies he shed a light on those skills as well those competencies as well and he stated as to what all attitudes the next generation advocate or lawyer should possess in fact a law graduate all of them should possess and he has asked us to introspect 
and he has asked us to inspire our law students so that they can be socially conscious citizens and we thank sir for his wonderful session uh, they say well begun is half done and we have surely begun this have to be really really well thank you sir thank you so much sir in fact i always feel the practical uh, practical aspect of our program is somewhere missing you know so when they join the court or when they even join some law firm or any for the, for them sometimes it's a surprise you know they think whatever we were being taught you know in the uh, school it's entirely different here so somewhere i think we have to play an important role to bring that practical aspect so that they are groomed for the every sort of employability right from the beginning thank you so much sir thank you so much thank you Thanks so i will be permitted to leave now thank you yeah of course thank thanks a lot thank you